this brother here, myself, all of us were born with our hair like this, and we just wear it like this because it's natural. Because uh, the reason for it, you might say, is like a new awareness among black people that their own natural appearance, its physical appearance, is beautiful and it's pleasing to them. Black is beautiful. Free Black hair, also known as natural hair and afro-textured hair, is hair whose texture hasn't been altered by chemical straighteners, including relaxers and texturizers. An afro hairstyle is sometimes referred to natural, but black hair can be worn in many other styles besides a short fro. As we look around the world today, we are starting to see more women and men embrace their natural hair. Natural hair is not the same for everyone. As we all experience different things, I decided to interview three different people to tell their insight on their natural hair journey and also discuss the controversy about natural hair as we look at it in today's society. Most people with natural hair spend majority of their time in a salon or barber shop. Hey, what's going on? You here with Jesse Smalls. We at Center Stage Barber Shop. Barber slash natural hair stylist, man. We just my first pair of clippers. I think I was about 13 or 14, and I've just been cutting ever since. Uh, I cut women, men, whoever needs a haircut can get one. A lot more people in 2018 also like just letting their natural hair grow, whether it's men growing their hair in the dreadlocks or women just stop getting perms, cutting them off, and just decide to let their natural hair grow. I remember sitting in the kitchen for what seemed like all day while my mother did my hair. Today it's a lot easier thanks to PCJ Original Formula Relaxer with Nutrasheen. It's a chemical treatment designed to permanently alter the hair's natural texture into a straightened state. But be careful, it can cause damage. Perm is, I think, the most excruciating burn. I think it's, I think it's hotter than fire. Especially the first time. I mean, the first time you've never felt like your whole skull is on fire. And why are you doing this? Well, I started my natural hair journey when I came to college. It kind of started my sophomore year. I started having, I didn't really have time to perm my hair a lot since I was like four hours away from home. So I just kept my hair braided and stuff and started cutting off the straight pieces. And ever since then, I never, I never really got a perm again. Winter of 2013 is when I first started my dreads, and yeah, I've been going to approximately five years now. Locks can be different, and locks can be the same. However, it's all about how you take your, how you take care of your dreadlocks and your appearance with them. Well, my advice to people who starting dreads: make sure you have a great loctician. Make sure they have all your dreads flowing in the same direction. Make sure they make they make every dread the same size. You don't want to have thin dreads or dreads too big, then you have some that are too little, then you have more on this side and less on this side. You want to be proportionate. So make sure your hairstylist at least knows what she's doing before you take that step with your hair. Black people are aware, and white people are aware of it too, because white people now want uh, natural wigs. They want wigs like this. Dig it? Isn't it beautiful? usually wear my hair out in a fro. I've had people like just come in, like just grab my fro. And like when I go home for breaks, my dad and my grandfather, they're always making comments about when am I gonna get my hair done. My brother was offered a position as a manager at AutoZone, but he had dreads. 
and his boss told him that he would love for him to be the manager, but the only way he could get it was if he cut his hair off. Actually, when I applied for a job at Chick-fil-A, I actually went through all the interviews and everything, and I actually met with the, um, the store owner, with a Chick-fil-A owner, owner operator, which was a Caucasian lady. I can't remember her name at the moment. However, I met with her, and she informed me that Chick-fil-A doesn't have a policy for men with hair. Not meaning men with a haircut or a small afro, meaning a men with dreadlocks, ponytails, braids, anything of that nature. Black hair. I know. For black people. But black people don't wear that no more. So my nappy hair is not worth anything? No. no. They don't want to know that you don't, know that you don't alpha cut like this. Okay. They want to look the style. You know, you, right now you're looking at all the magazine, all the style. They what want to look sexy. They want... No, I do not believe there's a such thing as good or bad hair because, I mean, hair really is about you as a person. It's about how you want to wear your hair and nobody should be able to tell you how you want to wear it because your hair should be able to describe you. You can have three dreads in your head, you can have a hundred dreads in your head, you can have red hair, blue hair, black hair. It's because you want to as a person. Good hair is healthy hair. It doesn't matter what kind of texture you have. If your hair is healthy, not no breakage, it's not dry, then that's good hair to me. Today's society, it just seems like as black people, we have to somewhat conform to a natural hairstyle versus like what our hair naturally is, like dreadlocks and longer and puffier and just us. Natural hair means that a hair has not been treated with any chemical relaxers. An afro, that small or voluminous halo of highly textured hair that floats above some black women's scalps, does not mean that she's about to set off the revolution. There is nothing dreadful about dreadlocks, they're also not a sign that someone smells, sells, or smokes marijuana. And by the way, they're locks, not dreads. And a black woman who chemically straightens her hair is not trying to be white. When in doubt, of course, the best course of action is to understand a black woman by what's in her head, not what's on it.